In this video, we're going to talk about how to create a custom cursor in Edge Animate. Now, I have an example of what I'm talking about right here. I'm just going to hit Command Return for this file. A new browser will open, and you can see I have got a custom cursor. I've created a magnifying glass cursor. And not only that, though, when I hover over top of this element here, this symbol, you can see my cursor actually enlarges. When I roll out, it goes back to that other small magnifying glass. Let's first of all take a look at how I created the magnifying glass graphic. I'm going to come over to Illustrator. And this is simply some vector shapes that utilize the 3D extrude effect. I can really see that if I come up to my view drop down menu and select outline, you can see that this magnifying glass is actually just made up of several circles that have been extruded and then expanded so that I have something that looks like this. I then made an artboard that was exactly the size of my graphic. Here, I could probably make that a little bit tighter. And once I have an artboard around the graphic that I want to export, I come to the File drop-down menu, click Save for Web, and here I'm going to export it. But I do want to mention one thing. There is an upper limit to the custom cursor size that we can create. And in fact, that size is 125. So I'm going to make sure that I hit 125 here. This will be the maximum size for the large magnifying glass. And I'm going to save this as custom cursor large. You can see I've already got that in here, so I won't actually save that. And then I'm going to create another version of this that is roughly half the size. I'm going to say 50 pixels wide. And I'm going to save that as custom cursor small. You can see I've got these here. Custom underscore cursor large and custom underscore cursor small dot PNG. Once you've saved both of those files, I want you to come back to your Edge Animate program. Let's create a new file. And in this new file, we're going to import those two graphics, custom cursor large and custom cursor small. And it places both of those on our stage. We don't need them on our stage, so I'm just going to delete those. What we really need is, though, to have those in our images folder within our library, as you can see here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my rollover button where the cursor becomes large when I roll over top of it. I'm just going to create a rectangle and I'm going to convert that to a symbol. And I'm just going to call that button. And I'm going to say OK. Now there's two things that we need to do here. In the example that we were looking at, I had the cursor change for the entire document. No matter what the cursor was currently hovering over, it was going to display that small magnifying glass. So let's set that up first. What I want to do is I want to come down to my layers panel down here, my timeline panel, and you can see that each one of these layers has a little brackets right beside it here. If you double click those brackets, that opens up the code snippet dialog box for that element. I've opened up the stage code area. I want to click on this plus symbol here, and I'm going to select composition ready. Composition ready is an event that occurs when the entire composition is loaded on a browser, and that's all it is. I'm going to cut and paste my code right into this code area here. What this code snippet is doing is telling the entire document that there is a document element that covers our style. And inside that style, there is an element called cursor. And we are going to change that cursor to what? Well, here is our URL, and this is just a path directing our cursor to display this particular code. In fact, I'm going to call this underscore small. I'm just going to close that and preview this in my browser. Command return on my keyboard. And now you can see that wherever I place my cursor, that small magnifying glass is going to display. Let's come back to our document. I'd now like to have the cursor display the large magnifying glass when we roll over this symbol. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the button in my timeline down here. And again, I'm going to click on the packets for that particular layer. And I'm going to click on the plus button here, and I'm going to say, make this a mouse over event. So when someone hovers over top of this symbol, they are going to do something. And what I want you to do is just paste in this code here. Now, what this is saying is that for this particular timeline, find this symbol. Now, this symbol currently is called button, but it would have to be named whatever symbol for which you want that cursor to change. And it's saying to that symbol, take this CSS function called cursor and change it to this image. And currently, I've got this set to, to two, but I'm going to make that custom underscore cursor underscore large. And that's all I have to do. I'm going to close that and I'm going to open up my browser, command return on my keyboard. 
Now you can see that my small magnifying glass is displayed, but as soon as I hover over top of the symbol, the large magnifying glass displays. Roll out, small, roll back in, large. So let's just come back again and review what we've done here. We've added an action to our main stage that tells the cursor to display this image. You can see how this path is laid out. It's URL bracket in quotes images. That's the images folder. Inside of that folder is there's a, this PNG graphic set to auto. And that sets the cursor for the entire document. And then setting some code for the actual button calls for this button to display this image. And there's a mouse over event.